I want to get into uh, Tarot now. I want to understand more about this project and exactly how it works because you guys put out a blog post about it. I believe it was announced right before the Bitcoin conference. Um, for those who aren't familiar, can we start with a, just a, a high level definition of what Tarot is and, and maybe its relationship to Taproot? Yeah, absolutely. So Taro is an open protocol that's sort of made possible by Taproot. Taproot is a recent upgrade to, to Bitcoin that sort of enables greater contracting capabilities along with sort of privacy and efficiency benefits, right? And so Taro is a Taproot powered uh, protocol for issuing assets on uh, the Bitcoin blockchain that can then be transferred over uh, the Lightning Network for the benefits of sort of instant uh, high volume, low fee uh, transactions. And so Taro enables Bitcoin to serve as this sort of protocol of value. Um, it allows app developers to integrate um, assets alongside Bitcoin in apps, both on chain and over Lightning. And this expands the reach of the Lightning network um, as a whole. It brings more users uh, to the network who then drive more volume and liquidity in Bitcoin um, and allow people to, um, you know, have more routing fees if you're sort of a routing node on the network. Um, and so more network volume means uh, more routing fees and, and they get that sort of benefit of a multi-asset network um, without needing to actually support any assets. And we can talk about sort of the, the design of Taro and why we're super excited about, um, you know, the way that it's designed from a Lightning Network perspective. Yeah, okay. The first I wanna get into the, the topic of assets because I think the word asset is, is a very broad term that it, it means a lot of different things to different people. You know, asset, a new asset on Bitcoin could be a stable coin, it could be a fiat currency, it could be an NFT, right? It could be a totally, it could be a totally different crypto asset. Is there any particular kinds of assets you guys are, you guys had in mind here? Is it, is it, is it trying to be as flexible as possible to enable any asset? Yeah, I mean, I think the use cases that um, that we're most excited about, and again, this is a protocol, um, so you know there will be the ability to build different things. But I think the use cases that at least I'm most excited about is, um, you know, we hear so much from builders and people like Alex Gladstein who work in emerging markets that people there want exposure to stable coins or dollars, right? And whatever the reason may be, you know, that maybe they have expenses in, um, you know, fiat. Maybe they are scared about you know the stability or volatility of Bitcoin price. Um, personally, I may save in Bitcoin, but you know if we hear about those demand that demand from those builders in those emerging markets over and over again, it's something that we want you know to to build a solution to. We want to you know solve that problem, and I think that if we give um, these individuals, these users, these builders the ability to um, provide that you know stable coin or fiat exposure in a Bitcoin and Lightning native way, ultimately that allows for people to transition into becoming, you know, uh, more Bitcoiners, wanting more Bitcoin as they watch, you know, um, the, the different things play out as they see like, okay, I have the stable coin balance, maybe I had this Bitcoin balance within a wallet and I can kind of um, see how the two interact and maybe I start to save more in Bitcoin and spend more in fiat. And so I think, you know, the use case that I'm personally most excited about is meeting the needs of those emerging market users who are clamoring for this need for stable coins and the need for, for dollars. Um, and then, you know, what follows from that, I think, is um, easier adoption, easier education of, of people into uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem and the Bitcoin world. So in a way, this is kind of a gateway towards Bitcoin. You view this as like, if you can open up access to stable coins, that's a step closer for people to then move into adopting Bitcoin. Is that the idea? Exactly. The, the, the on-ramps you know, are so much easier if you think about, okay, how do people buy it now um, in emerging markets? And you know, some people don't have bank accounts, some people just have cash. And so that on-ramp into like, getting the actual you know, asset to be able to purchase um, Bitcoin can be difficult. And so if we have that on-ramp or we have that um, you know, stable coin that lives directly within the same experience of, um, you know, being able to purchase Bitcoin or, or whatever it may be, then I think that that on ramp and that sort of uh, move for people into Bitcoin is way easier. Got it. How is Lightning Labs planning to monetize Terra or, or is it at all? Is it is Lightning Labs going to be an asset issuer? Is there going to be a spread? What are some of the things you guys are thinking about in terms of how do you then 
how do you use how do you earn from from this creating this protocol yeah i mean it's an interesting question first i will just say like you know we have no plans to, to issue assets we're building a, a protocol um for the possibility of, of issuing assets and you know there will be partners who potentially you know issue those assets uh, lightning labs won't be issuing our own you know stable point or anything along those lines but in terms of monetization i think it's you know it's really early uh, ultimately i think uh, again, what I love about Lightning Labs is there's this focus on the mission, right? And then the mission is bringing Bitcoin to billions of people. And I think um, as part of that, um, you know, we've heard these countless stories from Lightning builders about users wanting um, this exposure to stablecoin within within a Lightning wallet, right? And so what we're focused on right now is building Taro from a protocol perspective, getting the code out there, um, launching it. Um, you know, we, we went through the spec process specifically so the community could provide feedback um, and give us, you know, some more direction about where to go. And so we're focused on, um, you know, delivering that that protocol. I think, you know, ultimately, our belief is that with Taro assets um, on Lightning, we'll see, uh, you know, pretty uh, large growth of, of routing activity. We'll see, you know, additional routing activity on the network. And so that means, you know, more routing fees for routing node operators, but it also probably means more usage of stuff like loop and pool to, you know, make sure that liquidity is in the right place at the right time. Um, and so, you know, as we think about, quote unquote, the monetization of Taro, um, you know, there's the possibility there that that increased routing traffic um, you know, drives more revenue to loop and pool. And then there's, you know, some some integrations with loop and pool that we could pursue in the future. But right now we're super focused on um, just delivering the, the Taro code and the protocol itself. Right. And so if, if in, a, in a world where Taro is implemented and let's say, let's say just for listeners, for simplicity's sake, there's one new asset and that new asset is going to be uh, lightning US dollars, stablecoin, right? Yeah. In that circumstance, um, how does having that additional asset on the Lightning Network affect routing node operators? What changes will they see as a result of this added asset? I'm really glad you asked about this. Uh, I think one of my favorite parts of the design of Taro is um, all of the sort of Taro asset stuff happens at the edges of the network. So the core um, of the network, which obviously runs on, on Bitcoin liquidity, can basically remain entirely the same while the edges of the network deal with the Taro assets. So in this way, the existing Bitcoin liquidity on the network um, can be leveraged to route Taro assets. There isn't the need to spin up an entirely new and separate network and have to bootstrap that. And so Elizabeth coined this phrase or, or meme um, that Taro plus Lightning will enable for us to basically Bitcoinize the dollar, which I think is brilliant. It's, we bring the dollar onto these Bitcoin and Lightning rails, right? And that allows for, you know, again, the edges handle the Taro assets. The core of the routing network doesn't necessarily have to. And this means that Taro can have a faster time to market and, and be useful um, earlier. Um, and it means that those routing networks at the core are likely to see, you know, a lot of increased volume because of the interest in um, having, you know, Lightning USD and the interest in moving that around. But they don't necessarily have to do anything different. They don't have to support uh, Taro assets or anything like that. The routing bump just comes to them um, as a part of the, you know, core Lightning network.